We have a lot to cover in today's video, including the latest trade talk heading into the offseason. Today, the teams we focus on include Montreal, Ottawa, and New York Islanders. Plus, we have UFA talk around the Boston Bruins and Jake DeBrusque. We have a big Game 7 tonight to talk about, plus lots of updates around in the coaching world, including who might be the bench boss for Team Canada, the upcoming international tournaments, more talk around Matt Bay Mitchkoff as well, possibly get into Philly as early as next season. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a huge Game 7 tonight, uh, our only one in the second round between the Edmonton Oilers and the Vancouver Canucks. So tonight will be Game 7 from Vancouver. The Canucks do have home ice advantage, um, but unfortunately they are going to be without Brock Besser, as we discussed yesterday. Uh, he was discovered to have a blood clotting issue, which will keep him out for the remainder of the playoffs. I mean, it's hard to give an exact timeline on recovery. Thankfully, it is not life-threatening. It was first discovered, I guess, in his legs, but the belief is, uh, if you look at like Freddie Anderson in Carolina, he had a similar type issue this year, and he was out for four months. Uh, we've had people in this uh, sport having issues with blood clots going way back, even you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, not a new thing at all uh, because of the type of profession you know having a lot of block shots like you, your veins can be altered by um you know when the puck smacks you really hard kind of keep in mind they sit for long periods of time and they're traveling uh dehydration can play a role uh, there's lots of things and hockey players are unfortunately more prone to it than a lot of other types of athletes it's just the nature of the job nature of the lifestyle um like i said it's, it's been a long going long time coming i know it was like steven stamkos i think it was back in 2016 was one of the more prominent names out there dealing with this. I believe Vasilevsky had an issue with it too a uh, long time ago. Thankfully, all these players were able to overcome it, return to their careers. Not not everybody can say that. There is a few that had impacted them longer term, but generally speaking, odds of recovery are good. So let's, let's hope for Besser's sake that uh, even though he may miss, well, he's going to miss Game 7, he likely misses the rest of these playoffs, even if they win tonight and carry on. Um, but hopefully by next season, he's ready to return and can uh, get his career back on track. Because after a, a lot of personal and professional struggles, he had one heck of a year um, in the regular season and in the playoffs. And it's going to be a huge loss for them. Rick Tockett did make a joke that Thatcher Demko was starting tonight, but that is not the case. Uh, he just wanted to get that out of the way and kind of make light here with the reporters uh, earlier today. But um, no Demko. They'll back, back where she loves. Uh, Pod Colson's coming out tonight uh, Mikheyev and Lafferty are back into the lineup at this point I don't have any news to suggest the Oilers will be going with a different lineup uh, so we'll see what they do it's going to be a exciting game I suspect it's going to be probably going to be close but the last game was the Oilers best game and it was I wouldn't call it a blowout, but it was close, you know, and it was the Canucks worst game of the series. So, you know, based on trends and based on how the last game went, I would give the edge to Edmonton based on how Vancouver has played on home ice and they can get the matchups they like better to uh, contain McDavid dry I the Canucks have an edge that way. So it's, it's really difficult to say uh, how this is going to go. I just hope that it's a, uh, a fun, exciting game. A closer game would be more entertaining, but may the best team win, and good luck with the Dallas Stars uh, in the next round. It's not going to be an easy opponent, but you got to get through the one you're in now before you can even start thinking about Dallas and being in the Final Four. So we'll see. Uh, it should be a fun game tonight. As I mentioned, lots of updates today in the world of coaching. Uh, lots of uh, mostly rumors, not a whole lot confirmed, but lots of chatter going on. Uh, I know when it comes to Team Canada, we, we already got some word yesterday from Team USA Team Canada for their coaching uh, bench boss jobs for the upcoming international tournaments of the Four Nation Face Off and the 2026 Olympics. Not confirmed. They have not made an announcement here as of yet. But according to Elliot Freeman, the two names to watch that are in it, he's they might get one each. Um, he's Right now, there's a belief that they may go with a different head coach for each event just to give more different guys a chance to do it. Uh, but John Cooper of Tampa and Rod Brindamore of Carolina 
rumored to be um, the main two guys they're looking at. So we'll say there's lots of great coaches around, many of which are Canadian. Even the ones that play or coach a lot of the top American teams are Canadian as well. So uh, they won't have any shortage of guys to pick from. That is for certain, but it'd be great to see uh, either of those guys get opportunities coming up. So uh, good choices all around. Uh, some other news as well. In Ottawa, there's belief, according to Jeff Merrick, that Jay McKee, of course, former NHL player, former um, OHL head coach, may be making the jump to join the Senators organization, but might be the head coach of Belleville is what he's heard. But at the same time, current head coach David Bell is still there. He's not been relieved, and they had a good season. They made the playoffs for the first time in a while, got to the second round. Um, and especially considering the amount of players they had called up to the Sens because of injuries and the fact that they were out of the playoffs late in the year, like I thought he, he, he did really well. So wouldn't really be all that fair to move on from him. I, if he does get replaced, I certainly hope for his sake that he, um, we can find other employment. So we'll, we'll see. Um, or maybe Jay McKee ends up being an assistant coach at the NHL level. You wouldn't, I wouldn't rule that out either. Um, Cause we also don't know how John Gruden will have any type of role with this team either. Of course, he's still technically with the Toronto Marlies. Uh, obviously he's not going to be the head coach. They've named him, but obviously uh, there's been some speculation. He could join the staff in a different capacity. So we will see according to Elliot Friedman. Um, there's some talk in San Jose for their empty job right now that Jeff Blashill is getting consideration, the former Red Wings bench boss, uh, currently, currently with the uh, Lightning as an assistant, uh, that he's getting consideration there. Uh, Marco Sturm, of course, uh, currently you know, working in the American Hockey League team for the Los Angeles Kings, and there's belief that Marco Sturm could possibly join the LA Kings as an assistant coach at the NHL level if he doesn't get the San Jose job. Uh, and Jeremy Colleton, there's been some talk about him. I know the Vancouver media, Rick Dollywall, had some reports saying that there was some belief that um, the AHL coach in Abbotsford for the Canucks, Jeremy Colleton, might not be returning. Uh, and they were looking for confirmation of that or trying to get some more information and the connects were not speak on it and there hasn't really been any more talk about it but i think the rumor has it now is that because he's weighing out options that he might have to go to the nhl again after coaching the chicago blackhawks a few years ago and he's maybe not sure what he's going to do so if Carlton goes to San Jose, that'll definitely create an opening. Maybe he gets an, uh, you know, an NHL assistant coaching job. Too hard to say, but I think that's what's going on with Carlton and Abbotsford, and why there's been some uh, speculation there. The Seattle job is believed to be between three guys, which is Dan Bilesma, who's been doing a great job at the AHL level with their uh, team in Coachella Valley. Uh, Todd McClellan's interviewed there, of course, longtime experienced NHL coach, and Jay Leach as well. Uh, in L.A. right now, Friedman expects that the most likely outcome is for interim head coach Jim Hiller to be named a full-time permanent coach and have the interim tag removed. I know just before I started recording, Kevin Weeks, who likes to post a lot of teasers online when news is coming, um, posted one of his you know, he'll either post a video or a picture with like the googly eyes saying, you know, make, makes you think something's coming, right? Um, and it was just a picture of like Hollywood. So I don't know if that, my guess was there must be some Kings related news, but we'll see. Uh, the most likely news will be that they're going to confirm Hiller, get the interim tag removed unless they surprise us and go in a new direction. Um, it's believed as well after he brought in DJ Smith, the former head coach of the Ottawa Senators late in the season. Uh, after he became the interim coach to help as an assistant, uh, work with the decor. Uh, it's believed that there's a team option right now for DJ. They're weighing that out. As in, If you bring back Hiller, the belief is, is that he's going to want DJ to, to remain with them there. And that's a possibility. However, we also learned, because there was some talk before he got hired in Toronto, that Craig Berube, uh, wherever he ended up, that there was a possibility that he bring a recent former NHL head coach with them as an assistant. We never really knew who that was. There's some NHL insiders that had that out there. And it's believed, according to Dave Pagnota, that DJ Smith is that guy. Um, so it is possible that DJ Smith returns to the Toronto Maple Leafs as an assistant with Barubi. That's not confirmed yet. He very well could end up in LA. If LA, like I said, removes the interim tag off Hiller, it's believed that they'll exercise the team option for his contract in LA and he'll remain there. Um, but 
he wasn't sure. So I guess, you know, looking at things, of course, DJ Smith was a former assistant coach with the Leafs before he got the head coaching job in Ottawa. So obviously the fam- you know, familiarity with the team. So we'll see what happens. DJ has options. So he'll be employed in one of those two teams likely next season. We'll have to wait for the news on LA before we really know where things go from here. Uh, not a lot of other updates regarding the other teams in New Jersey. It still sounds like Jay Woodcroft's the lead contender, but they're waiting on Sheldon Keefe, who might be somebody they prefer. We don't know. And I would suspect there were some people that said that the news and decision likely comes this week, but we don't have any further information to kind of confirm that at this time. Uh, some more updates on Flyers top prospect Matt Bay Mitchkoff, who we reported yesterday that there was a report out of Russia indicating that there was a good possibility he might be able to get out of his final two years of his KHL contract and join the Philadelphia Flyers by signing an ELC this summer and playing with them this coming season, which would be a lot sooner than they expected, which is great news for the team and for the fan base. Um, however, there is some more updates. That's not a done deal here as of yet. Uh, the things like they're sound like they're still being worked on behind the scenes. Uh, and the coach of his team in KHL did have a statement out saying that Basically, unless he plays top line minutes for the Flyers, he would expect him to be returned to the KHL. Um, you know, originally the original reports from Sports Express said that, you know, essentially they'd want to work out a deal so that Mitchkoff would be loaned back to them if he didn't make the team which is fully understandable. Why would he want to play in the American Hockey League when he can play in the KHL? He can still be in a pro league, and it's still you know, probably better for his development, to be honest. There's a lot of Russian players, and they make more money too, right? So there's a there's number of benefits to keep him over there if he's not going to be in a consistent NHL role. However, you got to get used to the North American game, so there is some arguments that way. But at the end of the day, you know, that's the expectation and that wasn't unusual by any means. But then to hear the comments from the coach today saying he better be getting top line minutes or we're going to want him back. I mean, that's kind of hard to guarantee. I mean, he really he could play first line, second line. Like, would I have any impact, doubt that he'd be an impact forward and get good ice time all the time? No, but it just seems like a weird thing to say and um, kind of throws a wrench in there wondering how likely this is going to be to work out. Basically, it sounds like they're going to have to bribe or pay off the KHL team to break the contract and the belief is it's around 400000 Um The Flyers can't pay that. They can only give him his new contract. So I don't know how this is all going to work. Uh, I believe maybe Mitchkoff can pay him out of his contract or something. I don't I don't know because I really don't know what he's getting paid over there. So it's, it's a little bit more complicated than a lot of transactions. So we'll have to stay tuned here. There still sounds like there's a lot of optimism that's going to get done and he's going to go to the NHL for next year. And if he does, you have to think, especially if that's sorted out well ahead of the draft, that that could impact other players like the draft status of Ivan Demidov, uh, who's arguably the second best player in the draft, according to many scouts. But a lot of people feel he's going to drop down because of the whole waiting and Russian factor. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, no firm details on Mitch Goff, just a little bit more of an update on that front. We'll see. The Rangers today signed themselves another massive prospect another six foot seven guy same size as matt rempe um so they could have themselves a pretty big team here if these guys continue to be nhl regular players down the road but 2023 six round pick dylan bobrek uh, gets his three-year entry-level contracts having a good season with the ohl's oshawa generals so uh certainly another massive prospect there the, the rangers have found themselves some really big prospects rempe's worked out pretty good so far We'll see if this guy does here in the next couple of years. On the trade rumor front and the UFA front, uh, we'll start with UFAs first, uh, the Boston Bruins. We know they have a, a lot of questions to be answered uh, as far as what their team is going to look like next year. And if you're a Bruins fan, you want to hear more about the end of season management. I believe it's coming up in a couple of days. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Wednesday um, that Don Sweeney, Cam Neely, uh, head coach Jim Montgomery, and I believe somebody from ownership is going to be there as well. Uh, not Jeremy Jacobs, but I think his son, I believe, uh, will all be present. And I think it's 1 o'clock Eastern. i, I got to confirm that time, but I know it's coming up here in a couple of days. So they'll probably give us a better um, indication of what to expect, so to speak. But I know lots of talk about trades, which we talked about yesterday. Linus Allmark being one of the prime names on that list. Uh, but lots of you know decisions to be made 
on the UFA front is believed that a bunch of the guys that are UFA probably aren't coming back. Like Matt Grizzlick, um, probably Kevin Shattenkirk. You got uh, James Van Riemsdyk, may- maybe, but not likely, as according to reports. Um, but another name to watch is Jake DeBrusque. I think Jake DeBrusque is the one guy that does have a chance to stay in Boston. Um, but I know listening to him talk uh, after Locker clean out after they were eliminated, kind of sounded like there wasn't as much optimism and just kind of sounded as much as he understands the business side that there was um, some disappointment in his voice that it wasn't already done, uh, that they haven't made a stronger effort to get him signed to keep him. So we'll see. I know there's certainly already reports out there that if he makes it to UFA, he's going to have a decent amount of options. And I don't think he'll have too much trouble getting close to what he wants on the open market, uh, which I'm not exactly sure what he's looking for. I would suggest probably something in the five, six million dollar range. Uh, I mean, DeBrus certainly had his fair share of ups and downs this year, but Overall, especially in the playoffs, was he were really uh, you seen more of the vintage Jake DeBrusque, when the player who can really be, you know, clutch in the big moments and not afraid to play that physical style of the game, drive to the net, work hard in the corners. Like you know, that's what a lot of teams do like about him. I, I've already seen some reporters from teams like Toronto, Ottawa, like other Eastern markets, suggesting that. Their teams would definitely like a chance to talk to him. So there won't be any shortage at all. I know a team like the Senators would be looking for, um, they, they have their eyes on a few players like in that category, you know, in that 27, to, we'll say 20, 26 to 30 range, uh, UFAs, uh, or even early 30s, for example. Obviously, it's going to depend on the contract, but, you know, um, looking for that middle six, somebody with experience, uh, preferably somebody who can play the left side. I know they're also looking at a guy like Tyler. To Foley apparently is a name that Sens are interested in too, um, but DeBrusque would be almost a better fit in a way because he plays the left side, like he's left shot, which is something they could use. Uh, a bit younger as well would fit in well with the group. Not much difference in age than you know Brady Kachuk, Drake Batherson, and uh, you know Norris and um, you know Timmy Stutzel and all those core members. So we'll see what happens. I wouldn't rule out some of the Western teams as well. Um, We'll see, but DeBrusque is going to have options for sure. And at this point, far from a given that he stays with the Boston Bruins unless they get him to what he's looking for. I know in the New York Islanders, there's uh, reports from Dave Pagnota as well indicating that uh, Jean-Gabriel Pajot's name is certainly out there. He's a player they'd like to find a new home for. And there's even some talk about Captain Anders Lee, according to Pagnota. Mainly, um, you know, didn't have the greatest season, really. And as much as they obviously like him as a leader and you know, and all that. We know the loyalty of Lou sometimes can gets in the way of moving on from veteran players. Um, but Pagnona's put uh, Lee's name as possibly being out there a bit. Now, most of the Islanders vets, a lot of them have a form of a no trade clause, so it's not going to be the easiest thing to do. Trading players when they're having a down season, making six, seven million dollars. Also, not the easiest thing to do in the case of Pajo. I think he's making five, but, you know, not not easy. You know, um, they don't have a ton of term uh, looking at a couple of years, but still, it's, it's not the easiest thing. I think in the Islanders' sake, you know, you could see a little bit more turnover as well. Um, you know, they, Brock Nelson, Kyle Palmieri, like there's not a lot of term on some of these guys. A lot of the veterans are down to one to two years, and they definitely need to get younger. They definitely need to get faster, but at the same time, they, they need to make sure that they get more skilled and more offensive. And right now, some of these guys that we're talking about do pitch in on the offense. Like Brock Nelson's the 30-goal guy. Anders Lee, when he was in his younger years, like I thought he was going to be a consistent 40-goal guy. And he hasn't been that in a long time. Um, even 30 is not something you normally see. Like, you know, 20 is usually a given. But, you know, it's, you know, I, I don't know. I, to, to me, Lee is not as big of a problem as some of the other players. Um, I think they like his leadership. And obviously, they've had a lot of consistency in that case. I mean, he's taken over the C after Tavares left and been a consistent player for them. So we'll see. The Islanders definitely need to move out some of their veterans. But Pajo name, not surprising to hear him out there at all on the market. Um, but it was a little surprising to hear Anders Lee, but at the same time, it couldn't be the worst thing in the world to shake things up if they can move out a veteran contract and uh, bring in some like some younger players who can hopefully help them 
further into the future because they do need to do that and it can be tough sometimes when you have that loyalty and that you know connection and you know to the, some of these players have been there a long time but that's when you got to separate business and personal and that can be challenging i'm sure now in montreal uh lots to talk about montreal and dave pagnona's latest, latest report as well and it seems like from what he's talking to other teams that the hams are out there when they're talking on the trade market that they're not really looking at the center ice position uh of course they have you know a few centers in their roster here now obviously with the possibility of kirby dock and alex newhook maybe being long-term centers one of them or both at least one could move to the wing on a more full-time basis i know doc was experimenting on the wing a bit before he had an early season injury and um lost his season this year but at the end of the day it's believed right now going into next year they'd like to see if kirby doc can be that number two center new hook will either move to the wing or be the number three center um so that, that's what they're telling teams and the belief is that, that right at the top of their list for what they feel will be available in the draft and the belief is is that for where they're picking at five they're really looking at Caden Lindstrom of course they know Celebrini is not going to be available there there's a good chance that Lovshinov some combination of Lovshinov Demidov Siliev, you know, like some of those guys are going to be gone. Like, th- there's a good chance that Lidstrom is available, not a given. If uh, I don't think he'll go top three, but he could go at four to Columbus. Um, so we'll see. But if they are with what they already have in their system and they can get him in the draft, would explain why they're not out there looking actively at centerman. But the belief is they want to add a top six scoring. Winger, and of course, uh, Pagnona goes on to talk about that. That's no surprise. We've talked about it here a number of times. It's it's a pretty well uh, not breaking news that they're looking to do that. Um, but the main way they're going to do that is a combination. They have a second first-round pick, the one that comes from the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, and they also have some prospects, including some D-men, which they have a plethora of. But according to Pagnona, the main likely defenseman, he lists four, that would be the most likely to be considered in a move would be Jordan Harris, Jaden Strubel, Matthias Norlander, and Adam Engstrom. So out of those four, I would suspect at least one, maybe two get moved. Um, and he mentions some younger players that they've had conversations around as well, which we'll get into in a second. He also mentions veterans like UL Armia, uh, Christian Dvorak, and maybe even David Savard be players that they're willing to move right now down. David Savard, it's not that they don't like the guy. They do need some veterans on that back end. He's been a good leader, good veteran for them, but he is entering the last year of his contract. And I don't know if they are likely to extend him beyond the current season, but they did get him as a UFA as well. Um, The trade value is not going to be super high. I wouldn't be shocked if they kept Savard, even if they don't intend to, to keep him beyond the coming year. We'll see. I don't know. But, I mean, Pagnota mentions him, but that was the only name I was a little uncertain about, but he likely has more connections than I do. So we'll see where that goes, right? I mean, Dvorak and Armia are not shocking to hear their names mentioned at all. Um, Now, when it comes to the players that they could be targeting, he mentions Trevor Zegers. Again, no surprise. We've heard Zegers' name out there a bunch. Mentions Kent Johnson or Cole Sillinger in um, Columbus. Uh, There is some speculation, depending on the new GM, that one or both those guys might be available. Uh, again, have to see how the new GM feels about it. We know Marco Rossi's name is out there in Minnesota. Again, he's more of a centerman now, so I think he's less likely to target unless they feel like moving him to the wing would be better. And he also mentions, even though he mentions it being a little bit less likely, especially given the injury, but he mentions Josh Norris in Ottawa, and I found that interesting. Uh, we know that the Ottawa Senators clearly are open to some moves, and they, you know, to shake up their core to some minor extent would be. Not shocking, considering how this past season went. Norris, to me, would be a prime candidate. But with that injury, again, and the injury history he comes with with a long-term contract, I don't know what the likelihood would be that they'd even be able to move the contract. Um, As much as they may or may not, they're probably open to it because they probably feel like it's a player that they can't bank on being healthy anymore. Um, and But other teams are going to be buyer beware of that too. But Norris to Montreal, I looked through... Saying, okay, could this make sense? Could it work? I'm not so sure. I mean, if, if Ottawa were to move Norris, they're going to want something in return that's going to give them another type of top six forward. It would be a swap. To me, it would be more of a hockey trade if they moved him. If anybody in their core group gets moved, it's going to be a hockey trade, not a future based trade. Um, you know, it's going to be, they need to bring in immediate help, another type of player who they feel better suits them. 
And looking at the Montreal Canadiens and for the players that they would be probably willing to entertain moving, I just don't see that happening. You know, they're not moving Nick Suzuki. They're not moving Cole Caulfield. They're not moving Uri Slavkowski. You know, so like there's really, if you take a look at the players that you know wouldn't, wouldn't be, you know, on the table for Montreal, I just don't know that there's anything else that Ottawa would want. You know, could there be future-based, you know, prospects picks? Maybe, but unless they can immediately turn and flip those to another team for another player that can fit that mold for the top two lines, I just don't see it being likely. But I just found it very interesting. First time we've heard Norris's name in the rumor mill, and especially linked to a division rival and team in Montreal. So this one I'm quite curious and thought I'd mention it here today to see. I don't see the fit, but we'll see if there's any further mention throughout uh, NHL Insiders in the rumor mill that name to that team comes up again down the road we'll see let me know your thoughts on all today's news and rumors down in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to the channel of course make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the news rumors and analysis of all 32 nhl teams thanks for watching i'll catch you next time